Good evening, people watch. I'm at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of Isaiah 46, 9. And it says, remember, remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Praise God. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, period. Not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe. Folks, the, the, the gospel is so simple. Those who believe in him and what he's done at the cross for them will never perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your tr tr uh, trust and faith in, tr in Christ alone, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is literally going to happen at any time. No, we don't have time left on this earth. And you are sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you speak to you, teach you, and change you if you let him. Now, Hal Turner, I know, I know, don't get me started, but he's got news. Now, he updated this thing about Poland. So it says here, he updated it about two hours ago, about the Poland uh, army chief prepare for full-scale war with uh, Russia. Now, it says here, his... I'm going to repeat a little bit of what I said earlier. So today publicly urged his people and nation to prepare for a full-scale war with Russia. Poland is preparing for preparing the military for a full-scale conflict with Russia. Polish Supreme Commanding General uh, Wisla Kukula, uh, Kukula said at a press conference, So Poland needs to prepare its soldiers for all-out conflict. Its armed forces chief of staff said today as the country boasts the number of troops on its border with Russia and Belarus. Poland's relations with Russia and its ally Belarus have deteriorated sharply since Moscow sent tens of thousands of troops in the neighboring Ukraine when this war started. Give me a second. Sorry about that. Okay, this goes on to say... It, he keeps saying that today we need to prepare our forces for full-scale conflict, not an, asymmet not an asymmetric type conflict, the army chief said. This forces us to find good balance between the border mission and maintaining the intensity of training in the army, he said. Speaking at the same event, Deputy Defense Minister Powell... I think it's Bejda, said that of August, the number of troops guarding Poland's eastern border would be increased to 8,000 from the current 6,000, with an additional re-guard of 9,000 able to step up within 48 hours' notice. They will get annihilated by uh, Russia. This is insanity right there. This, this is insane. Okay? Seriously? It says here, Kukala also said that current high interest from candidates to join the army posed a dilemma over whether to take in more recruits than budgeted for at the expense of military equipment procurement, especially as he said the interest was expected to start declining sharply from 2027. Now, <laughs> I personally think that they are all waiting to see what's going to happen to Biden. They don't have to, but they are. Now listen to what came out on War News, and this is this is tiny, but 
is a war news article. So Saudi Arabia, the new BRICS member, and now a close ally to Russia, has threatened G7 member states with a massive sell-off of European bonds if they seize Russian assets. So Bloomberg is reporting this unprecedented threat to the dollar and the euro that caught everyone by surprise. This came out today. According to Riyadh, the first target could be France and its debt. Saudi Arabia hinted privately earlier this year that it might sell off massive holdings of European government bonds if the G7 seizes nearly $300 billion of frozen Russian assets. People familiar with the matter told Bloomberg. The kingdom's finance minister expressed to some of his G7 counterparts his opposition to the idea which has intended to support Ukraine. With, some, with one source describing what the Saudi official said as a veiled threat. In May and June, the G7 explored different options regarding the Russian central bank's foreign bond, uh, bound funds. The group of seven traditional industrialized countries eventually agreed to take the profits and leave the assets themselves untouched for now. Despite pressure from the U.S. and U.K. to consider bolder options including outright seizure, some Eurozone members might um, were against the idea worried it could undermine the currency. Saudi Arabia's stance likely influenced those countries reluctant to Bloomberg's sources who asked not to be identified to discuss private talks. There was no such threats according to a statement sent by the Saudi Ministry of, the, of Finance. Now remember, this guy was here in the U.S. talking to Biden earlier this year. It says, our relationship with the G7 and other is one of the mutual respect and we continue to discuss all issues that promote global growth and strengthen the resilience of the international financial system. This, folks, is going to ruin the dollar. This is going to put this country, it's already bankrupt, and <laughs> this is going to push it over the edge. Basically, it's just going to go for a nosedive, head first. This bricks right here. This is what they're doing. In May and June, the G7 explored different options. So at a summit in Italy in June, after months of discussion, leaders agreed on a financial structure that would provide Ukraine with $50 billion in aid. The seven member state and the European Union have agreed to provide loans that will be repaid using profits from Russia's roughly 260 billion euros in pledge funds, most of which are in Europe. The funds are expected to generate between 3 billion and 5 billion annually. The French government did not immediately respond to Bloomberg's request for a comment. Bloomberg's reports that there was little movement out of G7 currencies when Russian assets were first frozen shortly after the full-scale invasion. Russia's going to annihilate this nation. I'm sorry, but they are. It's, it's just... It's just... It's just there. Now listen to this. This also came out today. Operation Naval Blockade. Operation Naval Blockade. Germany and eight other NATO countries aim to jointly procure naval mines to deploy in the Baltic Sea. German Defense Minister Boris uh, Petruas said today, as Russia takes an increasingly assertive stance in the region. 
The eight countries seeking to jointly procure naval mines with Germany are Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Norway, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and Sweden. So, Pistorius said joint procurement would have many benefits, reducing costs and allowing joint logistics and maintenance. Sea mines are a very effective method of deterring an attacker from the sea and are an extremely important uh, capability against Russian aggression. Now, if we're seeing this, they can see that. That's what they're planning. Russia can see this, okay? They know. Now, something came out on Zero Hedge. And again, I'm not going to get into this all the way. <laughs> but I thought it was rather cute. <laughs> Zelensky is concerned about Biden's health. Yeah, he's concerned about his health, so... Yeah. He's concerned about his help. That's what he's concerned about. He's concerned about his help. So, and from what I'm hearing, Schumer, and this was on Fox News. It came out on my feed. Schumer is open to Biden dropping out of the race. If Schumer came out and said that, then... Hmm. Yeah, this is pretty much, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they, would, how, would, how they would get rid of them. Well, I know how, but that's the only way they're going to do it. Now, this, uh, this came out of Times of Israel. Folks, you know what? When people, and I agree with Chris from Global Rapture Watchers, do not write me and tell me that we got plenty of time before the rapture because I don't want to hear it. All this stuff that's happening right now is proof that we're this close to the rapture. This close. That close. Uh, that, that is proof positive. We have never been in a time that we're in right now. Nor will we ever be. This time, the dispensation of grace is coming to an end. This is the dispensation of grace. The door is closing. The rapture of the church is about to happen. I think it's time for people to make a decision now. Either get saved or get stay or stay behind. And that's that's basically it. So the US sending Israel some heavy bombs Listen to this, that Biden withheld. So the Biden administration has released about half of the shipment of heavy bombs it has withheld from Israel since May over concerns the IDF would use them densely populated in densely populated areas of Gaza a US official told the Times of Israel today so in May the White House announces a decision to withhold a shipment of 1800 2000 pound bombs and 1700 500 pound bombs with Biden threatening to freeze additional offensive weaponry if Israel launched a major offensive in Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah. Israel subsequently tailored its operations to account for the administration's concerns about mass civilian casualties and the sides were on track to resolving the issue of withheld shipment, an Israeli official told the Times of Israel. 
So Netanyahu has claimed that he only went public with the dispute over weapons transfer after months and of efforts to solve the issue privately failed. He came out and said that the U.S. is withholding weapons that they need. So the U.S., after Gallant's visit, acknowledged that some bottleneck had accumulated in the weapon transfer system but insisted bureaucracy, not politics, were behind them and that they have since been addressed. Yeah. Confirming that the 500-pound bombs were en route to Israel, the U.S. official indicated that primary reason those particular munitions were held up in the first place was that they happened to be part of a shipment that the more lethal 2,000-pound bombs. So, they're full of crap, basically. They did that on purpose, and they know it. Simple as that. Israel has said it plans to wrap up its tailored Rafah operation in the coming weeks to shift to lower intensity fighting that will largely feature pinpointed raids in areas of Gaza where Hamas tries to regroup. Because of these shipments, because of how these shipments are put together, other munitions may sometimes be commingled. That's what happened here with the 500 pound bombs, a U.S. official continued. Again, they're full of crap. <laughs> As always, the U.S. is always full of crap. Sorry, but they are. Now, I got a feeling that a lot of this stuff has to do, the reason why a lot of this stuff hasn't taken place as of yet is because of this Biden administration and this thing with him and how to get him out, so to speak. I do believe in the coming weeks, in the coming weeks, all hell's going to break loose. And it's going to break loose fast. It's going to be fast. Hopefully it's the rapture <laughs> so we can get out of here. But um, I just have a feeling that something is about to break. And it's going to break in that administration. Now this came out also, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to place this from Zero Hedge. And this is saying a house oversight, this is bad. A house oversight subpoenas top Biden handlers to find out who's running the country. Yeah, to find out exactly who's running the country. This is bad. Now, but it's all in line for prophecy. This is all in line. This is all in place. All of it is in place. I'm not going to go into the article too much, but I am going to link it in the description box. It's off a of zero hedge, so you can see this. But it's deep. <laughs> it's really deep. So I'm going to link this in, uh, in the description box. And if anything else come up before the time I go to bed, I will be back on. Otherwise, um, I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully I don't wake up and all hell's breaking loose tomorrow. Because it's about to. I can feel it. In every fiber of my being, I can feel it. <laughs> so I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.